Hi, welcome to Horticulture and Home. Today I'm making a meatloaf and I thought I'd share how I do that with you. I have two and a half pounds of ground beef and one pound of breakfast sausage. Now sometimes I use uh, a half pound of uh, regular breakfast sausage and a half a pound of hot breakfast sausage, but that's up to you and today I'm just using standard breakfast sausage. To that, I'm going to add one and a half cups of oats, and these are regular oats, which I have um, partially ground. And then I have one cup of milk and three eggs. And I'm going to partially beat my eggs. And I'll go ahead and add my eggs and my milk together. This is a step you can skip if you like, but makes it easier to blend, I think, um, once you get in here and start mixing with your hands. Then I have about two and a half cups of chopped onion. I'm going to put about two cups in here and see if I need the rest of it once I get it mixed. That all depends on how much onion you like and uh, how much fat is in your meat. And part of it I just do by eye. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This one happens to be uh, roasted garlic, but standard Worcestershire sauce works fine. Then I'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic salt. My favorite brand of garlic salt is Lowry's. I'm going to add about another half to three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt at this time. And I'll check my seasoning later. I'm going to Mix this together, uh, let it set for a little while to let the flavors marry together, and uh, then I have one cup of tomato sauce. And once I let that all set, I'll take a little piece of it and saute it off. If I'm happy with the flavor, then it'll be time to bake. The other reason this needs to set for a little while is because the oats need time to absorb the moisture. The egg and the oats are the binder for the meatloaf. Then remove all your rings and jewelry you might have on your hands. And get in and mix. It'll seem like a lot of liquid. But once that um, the oats begin to absorb that moisture, you'll see less liquid. Now you could use breadcrumbs or quick oats if you like. You just might want to reduce the amount of liquid that you put in your meatloaf. Now since I didn't use any hot sausage, I'm going to add a little bit of crushed red pepper flake.
and also some black pepper. And I always prefer fresh ground pepper. That's probably about an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon. Now I'm just mixing the red pepper flake and the black pepper into my meatloaf. Then I'll pop this into the refrigerator for at least an hour. And we'll check the seasoning. Okay, I've let my meatloaf set for uh, approximately one hour. And I took a bit of it and sauteed it off in a pan. And I tasted it. And I'm going to add just a sprinkle of salt, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of a teaspoon. I think it needs just a little bit more. And I'm going to add a little more tomato sauce. In the end, this wound up being a uh, 28 ounce can of tomato sauce. And between what goes in it and on top of it, I'll use all of it. And then the sausage that I have, um, I don't think it had a very much sage in it, so I'm going to add just a little bit more sage too. This is uh, my own dried sage from my garden, and I'm just going to rub that down to bring out those essential oils. I'm going to mix it one more time. And since my chopped onions aren't chopped really fine, I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven and let this cook through. Uh, and it'll take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. This should make two nice sized meatloaves. This makes a wonderful sandwich if you uh, add it to uh, just slice some off straight out of the refrigerator while it's still cold and um, use it in place of lunch meat. I like it with whole wheat bread or rye bread and mayonnaise or, or mustard. Okay, now this seemed to be, um, this was a 80-20% ground beef that I used, and of course the sausage has extra fat in it. So if there's a lot of fat, I don't want to fill these too full, and in fact, while this is baking, I may need to drain off some of the fat. I normally do that part way through. So I'll bake this off, and then in just a bit, I'll drain off some of the excess fat. And before I put it back in the oven, I'll place the um, some more tomato sauce over the top. Okay, my meatloaves have actually been cooking uh, an hour already. I got busy doing some other things, but that's okay. Starting to brown on the top a little bit. I drain the fat off of them. You can see where they have shrunk. And so now I'm just going to pour some of this tomato sauce on the top. And I'm going to spread that out. Leave it on pretty thick, but spread it out. 
keep in some moisture and sort of form a crust. Okay, I have about three quarters of a cup or so left from that large can of tomato sauce and I'm going to be making some chili so I'll probably wind up just adding that to my chili because I don't think I'm going to need it here on the meatloaf. So let me put this back in for another um, 30 minutes or so and meatloaf will be ready and it'll be almost time for dinner. Okay, our meatloaf's done and our squash is finished and I've made some garlic mashed potatoes to go with them. So let me just serve up a plate. And there we have it.